Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. It is the 20th of December today and we're going to do an update video on Bitcoin. So in today's video, we, this is going to be relatively short compared to my last video. Reason being is this is really focusing on the short term analysis. Uh, with regards to long term analysis, there is absolutely no change to my previous analysis, which was just posted about three days ago. So check that video out if you want you know, a detailed video explaining my long term targets, which, as you'll know, is roughly around 30k you'll see a lot of confluence in fibs around that point uh, as i say that's explained in detail in that video we might just touch on it in this video also just to go through that but largely in this video we're going to be focusing on the short term analysis looking at how we've got this kind of consolidation here is it accumulation is it distribution are we about to power higher or are we going to go sideways a little bit longer before going higher or alternatively are we going to just get rejected from this level altogether OK, so these are the main talking points that we'll go through in today's video. So if interested, stay tuned. All right, guys, it's good to be back on another video with you guys and yeah, basically, I do want to kind of touch on that subject of video frequency at the moment, because obviously, I, I must admit, over the last six months or so, the content hasn't been that um, that much, really, has it? So maybe one or two videos a month, which is not ideal. It's not how I really intended for things. But basically, long story short, is uh, I became a father two weeks ago. So probably the proudest moment of my life. And um, yeah, last nine months has been a little bit rocky, so I won't go into details, but um, yeah, I see this as being hopefully uh, the start of a new era, and uh, I'm hoping with that you'll see more content from me. So um, yeah, that's largely going to be led by yourselves. Obviously, if you are enjoying the content, if uh, you know I'm seeing the lights coming in, then I will be producing more content for you guys. Was a little bit disappointed last video, kind of underperformed, probably one of my worst uh, rankings yet in terms of like to dislike ratio. So I'll, as I say, I'll be led by you guys. If you guys are looking, if you're finding value in the content, then I might as well produce more. If not, then maybe I'll need to think about whether it's really worthwhile. But uh, what I'm going to suggest is I'm really, I'm really up for this, you know, creating more content. So what I'm going to suggest you guys liking the video, you're going to see more content. Simple as that. It's as simple as that. So what I'm going to suggest is we'll start off with, let's say, if I get 200 likes on this video, you'll get another update this week. If you, if we get 300 likes on this video, um, I'll do another video tomorrow. Yeah, you'll get an update tomorrow. So yeah, it's down to you guys. We'll see how it goes. But with that said, let's jump on into the analysis. So first of all, you know what let's just quickly look at the long-term analysis so it's a bit of a recap on what we discussed last time and i can i think i kind of get why the um you know uh, there were a few more dislikes in the last video uh because obviously i'm labeling this as all being corrective yeah whilst we're seeing pretty parabolic moves here we saw it here and when you see that kind of parabolic in nature, it makes you think impulse always because it's happening very, very quickly. OK, I give my reasons in the last video for why I see it corrective. But that said, it doesn't change a thing from a trading point of view. It doesn't change a thing whether you see it impulsive or corrective, because from where price is now to 30K, you know, I see it as, I see it as being bullish whether it's corrective or impulsive. I see us pushing up from here, yeah? So I go into detail on the reasons for that in the last video. Now, the only difference is I will be very cautious at 30K and taking profits off the table, yeah? But even if it's impulsive, I'm pretty confident you're going to see a pullback at this level. There's a lot of confluence. You're going to get a lot of bots getting triggered at this point. So regardless, you're going to see a bit of a pullback at 30K, even if it is all very impulsive from here upwards, okay? So personally, the way I look at it, if we see a, a major, you know, five wave down off of 30K, then I'd be deeply concerned um, and a bit hesitant to jump back in. However, if we see consolidation beneath 30K, I'll be very happy, very, very happy to jump in back on a long position. 
preparing for the, you know the next leg higher above 30k very happy so as i say it, it really doesn't change a thing um, what i've learned over the years is always be cautious about the corrective count always be cautious because you've got to remember technical analysis is largely about kind of speculating on where price is going yeah uh, there's a lot of unknowns you know we don't truly know what's going to happen with the stock markets just yet there's a lot of variables still at play um so we've got a, there's a lot of unknown answers that should hopefully come out soon but um yeah as i say 80 percent of the time you see corrective price action yeah so what i've learned over the years is to take profits once you see the completion of a correction it means having a bit more modest targets and taking profits and it's it's a I know I understand people can be reluctant to do it because it means you're kind of potentially eating into profits. But long term, if you look at all your trades, I find it to be a lot more profitable when you take those early profits, at least something off the table. So, yeah, just a little bit about how I would be playing it, to be honest. So, as I say, long to 30K. And then uh, at that point, it's really about taking profits and reevaluating at that level, letting price action determine uh, on any further trades to take um all right so with that said um yeah basically main reasons for targeting this level of 30k is you get a lot of confluence at that point so we're looking at the three waves down to make a three waves up to make the b and then the c wave coming down to make complete a running flat so um I won't go too much into detail on the target for the C wave because obviously we're still working on B. Um, but yeah, in terms of targets for B, once we took out 20K, yeah, in my opinion, we were heading on to um, 30K. There is a little bit of resistance at 24K where we currently sit. Um, but basically, yeah, yeah, if we do the FIB projection, looking on our FIB retracement tool off of the whole of the A wave, and you'll see at 1.2 our 1.236 fib projection sits here at 30k and then you get that confluence when you extend this wave here from here and you'll see the 1.382 also sits very very kindly at the 30k mark yeah so very very nice confluence you will see a little bit of resistance posed here because we are at around 24k where we get our 1.236 fib extension yeah on top of that, there is a FIB projection that offers uh, resistance at 24K, and that's if you do it looking at this wave down. So if we just do the FIB projection of that, you'll see again at 20, I believe it's 23K roughly, we've got the 1.382 FIB projection, okay? So a couple of reasons why you see a little bit of a pause in the price action, but when we zoom in, we'll see we're really flagging at this point rather than getting rejecting, suggesting that we are just getting ready to push higher. OK, so, yeah, in terms of the count and everything, that will all be in the other video. So do check that one out if you are interested. But let's zoom in and take a look at what exactly is going on here. There is a major pitchfork that we can quickly bring on. So this is the pitchfork for the price action going higher. We've got our first, second and third pivot. So a shift pitchfork. So following a corrective gradient. And you can see we're just hovering around the 1.5 line. Now you can see very nicely we found support off of the upper median line taking us higher. You know, bit of a pause at the previous high at 20k, and then we're making our way to 24k where we're sat at the 1.5. And you'll see the upper warning line is just beyond our 30k. You may get a wick through 30k up to your upper warning line, and then um, we'll, well, we'll see where it goes from there. But as I say, this pitch box pretty interesting um, just to follow as I say we're at the 1.5 line so and if we zoom in on that if we go on the 15 minute you'll see actually we're using this as a bit of resistance flip to support right now so I thought that was pretty interesting as well how you can see pretty regular resistance here and here here and then all of a sudden it's acting as support okay uh, so just going back on the daily and then there's a couple of smaller pitch rocks that we need to address as well so that's our major one uh, if we go on our mid, so we've got this one here. So this is looking at this kind of um, aggressive move up. As I say, we're going into some kind of par parabolic move here. Uh, and you can see, obviously, we're at the upper warning line of this pitchfork. So you can obvious we're in overbought territory. But what you often get with these parabolic moves is they will completely obliterate the upper warning line. Here you very often get that. 
Often it's the terminal phase in a, uh, in a, in a wave count which is basically confirmed by the, the breakout of the pitchfork. You know, it goes up largely on hysteria. So, um, yeah, as I say, we've got this. We're kind of in overbought territory. So another reason why we, we could see a bit of resistance at 24K, yeah? And so, as I say, we've got the upper warning line, which often acts as resistance. But as I say, for me, I, I believe we're going to go up in a pretty dramatic fashion here, uh, which could certainly take us up and above this upper warning line. And then there is one smaller pitchfork that I'm focusing on, which is this one, where we zoom in and really look on the shorter time frames now. So if we go in on, let's go on the hourly. Let's even go on the 15. So on the 15, so this more recent run up here, we have our first, second, and third pivots following a very steep gradient off of the original pitchfork here. And uh, again, up at the upper warning line where we just gone sideways so we didn't get a major rejection okay so this is what i was talking about in and around 24k we didn't get that major rejection uh to the downside with a five wave count down we've got this sideways move and to me we're just hovering beneath resistance as i say 24k there was a lot of resistance at that point as i showed you with the fib projections and the fib extensions giving confluence in and around this level um so yeah just going sideways now question is with this flag that we're getting here are we going to make one slight higher high and then just suddenly tail off where this is just a terminal move, uh, which is very overlapping in nature, forming like a terminal diagonal and then tank down? I, I Personally, I don't think it is. As I say, the target I'm looking at is 30k. Um, now, there's a couple of ways it could play out. Obviously, weekend price action often gets reversed. So over the weekend, we have pushed higher. You see the dotted red line here. This is our Bitcoin futures close and this was at 22,900 approximately yeah so this will have created a gap on the futures chart which as we know more often than not they get filled so wouldn't be too surprised if we see a little bit of a pullback and I'm certainly prepared for this you know anything coming close to this uh, gap fill and certainly anything close to this lower warning line I'd be getting very interested in looking for a long position yeah so that would provide very nice confluence off of the the gap fill and the pitchfork, you know, even here or here, any of these I'd be very happy with. Um, it could obviously come, you know, a bit further down beyond the uh, the, the gap fill. Uh, for example, if we look at it from an Elliott Wave point of view, you can argue this is a, a bit of a regular flat and then we've pushed up in a three. Um, so we've got basically like a W an X and then we're, we're on to our Y and so obviously there's so many different ways that you know a complex uh, correction can play out so it could be a triangle for example we could just get converging price action into a triangle here uh, we could get a um, an ABC down yes yeah, so you, you may you may just get your a B and then you see maybe perfect gap fill maybe coming a little bit lower yeah, to test your lower warning line. Personally, I don't want to see it come down beneath these levels. I, I, I'm expecting this to be more of a running pattern rather than an expanding pattern. Just because when you get that kind of parabolic move, that's generally what you see. Uh, you often get these you know, running patterns uh, where you just keep going higher and higher. And you don't necessarily, necessarily have to have your gap fill. Okay, that's another thing also. So as I was saying to the group, it is worthwhile... Uh, you know, any long position, I wouldn't make it too big because we are still beneath resistance, which is around 24K. You could trade on the breakout of 24K. That's one way, you know, taking out this high. Um, but personally, I wouldn't have a large position because we could have a bit of a, uh, a drawback before we go higher. Yeah. But personally, I don't want to see price drop down beneath these levels. Um because as I say, I'm looking for a running pattern, not an expanded pa pattern. If it comes down beneath these levels at around 22,300, I'd be a little bit concerned about this actually 24K acting as a major resistance level and it was having a much, much bigger pullback. So as you can see, this smaller pitchfork currently holding a support off of the median line, yeah, which may hold. But as you can see, we've gone up in a bit of a corrective count here, a bit of a three wavish move. So I've got the opinion that we do get that gap fill at the moment just before we make the next leg higher. All I want to say is it's not guaranteed. And that's why, in my opinion, if you're going to go long, it has to be a tight stop whereby you have to allow the 
quite strong possibility you get stopped out. So if your stop goes beneath here, for example, uh, with it being beneath the median line, beneath the previous uh, low here. Um, so these are the things to be cautious of. And yeah, just a, a bit more about horizontal levels. So we were uh, just bringing on the camera pivots as well. So on the 15 minute, so these are often very useful just for timing breakouts. So as I say, I, I'm, I much prefer weekday price action rather than the weekend because as you know, weekend price action often gets reversed. Um, so coming into a Monday where you'll get your new uh, levels, you know, bounce off the S3 or the S4 is something I'll certainly be looking out for. I would certainly want to see how we close the day. At the moment, it's looking like we'll probably finish beneath the R3. And for me, that could potentially set up a bit of a drawback before going higher. Um, if it suddenly, if it closes the day above the R3, that is very strong. And it's suggesting that we're probably just going to see this curved out move just going higher and higher and higher. And we might not actually close this gap before hitting 30k. So at the moment, it's looking like we finished beneath this level for the day. And for that, I would probably be anticipating this move down to around the you know the gap fill area where I'll be looking for confluence off of this pitchfork just to time any entries and as well looking at the um, 15 minute Camarilla pivots for the next day as off the, the S3 and the S4. That's the kind of thing I'll be looking out for. So um, the other thing is, let me just pull up the hourly. So yeah, this, the Camarilla pivots completely obliterated on the hourly all the way back here. But it's on the daily, there was a, a very significant level. So that was this point here which has actually turned out to be a little bit of support so you can see we're quite comfortably above this level now that sits at around 23,300 yeah so we're quite you know we've been above it for a, a good while now at least 24 hours so if we go in on the 15 minute remember 23,300 it's basically around this point here yeah so you can see, yeah, today it's been acting as pretty good support here, little dip beneath, and then we suddenly went above and retested it here as support. So you can see that kind of, that uh, daily Camarilla pivot is holding a support at that 23,300, which is also good to see. And another reason why we may, if we do come back beneath this 23,300, may be very brief where we see a bit of a wick and then suddenly power higher. Okay, so these are all the things that I'm looking out for. But as I say, it's a complex play out right here. Um, certainly, I'm ready for you know every eventuality. I've got a small position in case we don't come back to this level. But if we do, I'm very prepared. As I say, I'll be looking at a few things for support. So certainly looking at the lower median line, lower warning line, uh, the next day's uh, S3 and S4 in terms of Camarilla pivots. So looking for confluence with any of these things, of course, with um, looking at the smaller early wave count for this final move down also. Um, so these are all the, the kind of variables that I'll be looking out for. So um, yeah, just wanted to throw that out, just looking at the, the shorter term analysis. Um, and yeah, we'll see how that plays out. As I say, if this video gets enough likes, we will see another update from me tomorrow. Uh, if not, might leave it to a little bit later in the week or yeah, um, so it'll be up to you guys. But um, yeah, I think I've pretty much covered m most of the things that we're looking out for at present. So um, yeah, we'll wrap it up there, guys, and uh, I'll see you soon.